Well, hello and welcome back. Today, we are sanding drywall, as you can see. And I'm just a little bit dusty because I don't have a very big vacuum cleaner. As you can see down here, it's a little vacuum. It's attached to my sander. And today's video is gonna be showing you how to sand drywall, how to make it smooth, um, and possibly make it as less dusty as possible. My favorite way to do drywall sanding is to hire somebody else. But since this is my what I do for a living, um, probably should do that. So anyways, the way I am sanding today, at least the majority of it, is with this pole sander here. This is a Amazon special, so you can get it in nicer versions. This one is made by Wynn, W-E-N. Uh, it is an extendable one, so you can make it longer or shorter. Uh, it is attached with a power cord, which a tension cord is needed to get very far. And it comes with a hose on the end, which works out nice, because then you can connect this hose to your vacuum cleaner. Like so, this has a little attachment there, which as you can tell, my vacuum is completely full of dust, so it's not picking up as it should. My recommendation would be get a, as big of a vacuum cleaner as possible. That way it sucks out all the dust from the air, especially if you're working in a finished house. This one is going to be, this is like a classroom and the carpet's going to be replaced. So I can make some, almost as much dust as I want, even though I want as less dust as possible. I still wear a respirator so I don't get it in my lungs. Uh, this sander comes with these sanding discs with the holes in the middle. Those holes are where the air gets sucked through from the vacuum and it collects the dust. Um, and you just Velcro it, it's Velcro it on the bottom, so you just peel this off, put the new one on. So this one's actually the new one, that one's the old one. And that's one way to sand. This is my favorite way to sand, if I have to do it myself. But there's also other cheaper options uh, that you might do, especially if you're doing just like a touch-up, like say you're fixing a pissed hole in the wall. You can take little sanding blocks like these. This one has like a, a nose on it, this one's worn out and broken, but as you can see, it has like a point on it. It helps you get in the corners. They make different grits. Like this one's a little rougher. This one's a little smoother. So depending on what you're trying to do, if you're trying to get it real smooth, you'll want a smooth one. But if you're trying to knock off some big pieces of mud, the nice, thick, uh, heavier grit is nice. So a little close up of that. This is just the square block. It's like a little sponge and you can hold on to it. And it keeps it kind of flat. Sorry, the tape there. It keeps it kind of flat. That way you can make a nice flat surface. Because if you just take sandpaper and put your hands, you'd be cutting grooves in it. So this is the next best option. They also sell ones on poles, which I'll probably show you later in the video if I get that. It's not with me on the job site here, but I'll get one to show it to you maybe before I post this video, hopefully. If not, maybe in the future, but we'll get it done. So I'm all dusty because my vacuum is not big enough. Um, so, and since I'm not worried about changing the filter out as often right now, because the real one, I'm just gonna get the job done. These are what I'm using. So I've used that to run over the flat here on this side, and I'll put in a little video here showing that real quick. Then I'll show you what this is used for. So that is all nice and smooth everywhere except for that round bit doesn't get into the corner very well. Up on the wall and you can see there's kind of a black line. So I run it along the ceiling the plastic on the side touches it, which is kind of nice actually because then I can take this and I can go up to the wall and I can erase that black line and it tells me where I've been and haven't been. So let me bring you close up and show you how the sponge works um, and we'll get it nice and smooth together. So on an eight foot ceiling, I'm tall enough to where I can use just a bucket and I'll slide it to where I need to go, step up on it, and then I can reach up here, my sanding block, and I can just run it along the edge here and then along the edge on top. So I'll start with just doing a few passes on the top and uh, usually have another hand to support myself so it's a little easier. Well, I probably want to wear a mask for this too, but then you can also run this. And just work in that corner and get it nice and smooth and straight. Like I said, kind of removing that black line is what my goal is. So nice and straight, I get you nice and close to the corner. It's a nice 90 degree, no holes in it is the goal. Just nice and smooth. So that's what a sanding sponge does. It's really easy. Let me put you back up here. It's really easy to use. This one has a kind of a rough side and a smooth side. So you can get those options too. This is probably, if you're just a beginner or if you're just working on fixing a hole in the wall, just get one of these sanding sponges. You can get them longer as well. Or like I said, you can get them with this point on it. Uh, you can get along with the point too. Bunch of options, but these are pretty much all go around. And at the end, when I've done sanding with the big sander, if you're doing a big section like that, 
I'll come back through and I'll make sure that if there's any high spots or low spots, I'll just kind of finesse it with this to make it disappear. This wall is going to be textured with the orange peel texture, like a spray on texture. So you're not gonna see a lot of your flaws anyways, but if you're going with a flat finish uh, on the wall and you didn't get it nice and perfect, when you paint that wall, you'll see all the blemishes. And sometimes you have to paint it before you can tell where to fix. If you want it perfect, sometimes you have to prime it, but overall, it's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna continue on sanding with this uh, in the corners, like in some of these corners over here, especially up in the ceiling. If you wanna make a nice clean corner, like say around up there, you can use your hand block to sand around that. If you wanna get down here, there's like this wire that's gonna go through the wall because we don't need to reroute it. We're just putting it through the wall. So I can come back through and hand sand around this with my sanding block and it'll turn out nice. And I'll fill that little hole some more. And once we paint it, it'll look phenomenal. So what do you think, Copper? Look good? I think it looks good. Put a little white dot in the nose. So anyways, I'll do a little more sanding and I'll bring you back to the pole sander and show you how to do that before we end the video. So real easy, real easy. They also sell the pole sanders that don't have a pole on it, just the handle, and you can do it. I'll try to get those stuff and show it to you real quick. But anyways, let's continue on. Okay, it is a new day in a new Carhartt shirt color. <laughs> but the last thing I wanted to show you before we ended the video was the pole sander. This is just a simple pole with a little sanding thing on the top. It's got these two little clips. You lift these up and then clamp the new sanding pad underneath of it. This is just like a, like a mesh almost. You can get this in different grits as well. And so this one is kind of like a 150, so it's kind of smooth, but you can also get it in higher grits to where it can knock off some bulk material, but I don't use these very often. These are kind of nice when you're on the walls and you're just trying to want to do one final pass and clean it up, or if you're a decent drywall and you don't have a lot to remove, uh, these are good to have. Also, if you want to reach up to the ceiling, you can do that without having to stand on a bucket. So these have their place. Uh, I don't use them very often, but drywallers have them. There's also a bunch of other options. I'm not going over this video. These are the ones that I use and trust in, but also, like I was saying, they have these without the pole, this with a handle on it, and you can run it by hand as well. And like I said, you can change these little things out. So anywho, that is how I sand drywall. Hopefully it's helpful. Hopefully you learned something new and hopefully you enjoyed watching. Uh, we're going to be doing the texturing here soon as you can see around me. We've got everything taped off and ready for some spray. And uh, I might make a video on that too. We'll see if I have time. Do the orange peel texture and then we can paint, get this place carpeted, get the cove base on the bottom, new heaters on the wall. It's going to be sharp. This is going to be closets. We're going to put in some shelves put in a new door, trim it out. It's going to be awesome. So anyways, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something new. Don't forget to look in the description below and write a comment, please say you're watching. So I would love to hear from you. Anyways, have a good one. Catch you later. God bless.